speak cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So when the Mount of uh, Mount Sinai was covered by a cloud, who was in that cloud? God. And so who does the cloud represent? It's representing God. Again, let's come to um, um, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 5. Exodus 34 and verse 5. This is when, when the Lord meets Moses. And it says, Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of, of, of the Lord. How did the Lord descend in order to meet Moses? He descended in the cloud. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, or come, come with me to, to, to the book of Leviticus, chapter 16 and verse 2. How did the Lord manifest himself in the most holy place? Leviticus, chapter 16 and verse 2. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat which is on the ark, lest he die, for I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. So how does the Lord manifest himself? One of the ways he manifests himself in the Old Testament? He manifests himself in a cloud. Now, come with me to the book of Luke. Oh, come first to the book of Psalms, 104 and verse 3. Uh, there's a lot of verses in, uh, in this, but it's really beautiful. Uh, how the Old Testament tells us that God actually writes a cloud. Psalms 104 and verse 3. It says, He lays the beams of His upper chambers in the waters who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind. How does the Lord transport himself? In the clouds. Now, you look at the book of uh, Ezekiel, you will tell how, you know, there is that, the, the Ezekiel saw the, 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 the presence of God and he saw a cloud. Now, come to the book of Luke. Luke chapter uh, 21 and verse 27. This is very interesting. I had never noticed the, this detail of the second coming of Jesus. I had noticed it, but I had never given the importance of this until I understand the Old Testament background of this detail. Chapter 21 of the book, book of Luke and verse 27 tells us this. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in. Who is coming then? It's God, isn't it? What is he writing? How does the book of Psalm tell us that uh, God transports himself? He travels in a cloud, true? And when Jesus comes, how is he traveling? He's traveling in a cloud. And now, when we look at the book of Revelation, we find in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, that this angel comes, and when he comes, he is enshrouded with a, with a cloud. Who covers himself with clouds? God. And so this angel is not just any angel. This angel is more than an angel. Because he's covered himself with a cloud. Now, not, 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 not only the cloud tells us that this, the, the divine character of this uh, angel, but I'd like us to look also at the symbol of the rainbow. Come with me to, to uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 28. Notice here the two symbols again together. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud. 
Do we have the two symbols? The same that in chapter 10, isn't it? The, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So Ezekiel, when he sees the glory of the Lord, the cherubim transporting God in this cloudy chariot, uh, he sees the cloud, but what does he also see surrounding the cloud? A rainbow. And so in the book of Revelation, chapter 10, we find that the angel comes, and when he comes, he descends, clothed with a cloud, or surrounded with a cloud, and the rainbow is around him. What is this telling us? That this angel has the glory of the Lord. Yes? Now, notice this. We've got a messenger, we've got a cloud, and we've got a rainbow. What does the cloud and rainbow represent? Come to the book of Genesis. It represents, it tells us that the fact that this is divine. But notice in Genesis... Chapter 9, chapter 9 and verse 13 of the book of Genesis, the Lord here tells us the meaning of this. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 13 says, I set my rainbow in the cloud. In a, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. So what does the rainbow and the cloud represent? The, the cloud and the rainbow? It says it's a symbol of the covenant. Now, so according to the book of, uh, of Revelation, chapter 10, the messenger of the covenant has descended. True? True? Yes? Yes, it's the angel who's dressed in a cloud and covered or, or surrounded also by the, by the rainbow. The cloud and the rainbow are symbol of the covenant and he is the messenger. Now, question. Come with me to the book of Malachi. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Have we got anyone in the Bible called the messenger of the covenant? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. It says this, Behold, I send, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. This is John the Baptist. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. Who is the messenger of the covenant? It's Jesus Christ. And so in chapter 10, Verse 1 of Revelation, when John sees the angel, this messenger coming, and he's surrounded with clouds and a rainbow, who is he? He's the messenger of the covenant. And who is the messenger of the covenant? It's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, the messenger of the covenant travels in a cloud. And he's surrounded by the, by, the, um, by, by, uh, by the rainbow. What does that tell us of the messenger of the covenant? That he himself is divine. Amen? Because according to the scriptures, God travels in a, in a, in a, in a cloud. God himself covers himself in clouds. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 10. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. So here again we have the symbol of the cloud together with a pillar of fire. So who was the one that in the Old Testament was in the cloud and in the pillar of fire? It was Jesus Christ, the messenger of the covenant. 
who led the armies of Israel, you know, forward. Ah, why is he appearing at this time and in this context? Could it be that he is appearing to lead the final Israel to Canaan? And notice what happens in verse 2 says, he had a little book open in his hand. And we're going to look at the little book in a little while. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. 